of prompt or slow speech. Never to all men were all graces given. La Boti. Bautier. So we see that in the gift of eloquence, some have faculty and promptness, and as they say, can get it out so easily that at every turn they are ready, whereas others, slower, never speak except with elaboration and premeditation. As they instruct ladies to select games and bodily exercises that will set off to advantage what is most beautiful about them, so if I had to give advice regarding these two diverse abilities and eloquence, which seems in our time to be the profession principally of preachers and lawyers, the slow man would do better as a preacher, it seems to me, and the other better as a lawyer, for the former's calling gives him all the leisure he pleases to prepare himself, and then his course is run in a straight, continuous line, without interruption, whereas the opportunities of the lawyer press him at every moment to enter the lists, and the unforeseen replies of his adversary force him off his course, so that he must immediately take up a new line. Yet at the interview between Pope Clement and King Francis at Marseilles, quite the contrary happened. Monsieur Poyet, a man trained all his life at the bar with a great reputation, having the task of making the harangue to the Pope, thought it through long beforehand, and indeed, so they say, brought it ready-made from Paris. On the very day that it was to be delivered, however, the Pope, fearing that someone's speech might give offense to the other princes and ambassadors who were around him, notified the king of the theme that seemed to him the most appropriate to the time and place, a theme by chance wholly different from the one on which Monsieur Poyet had labored, so that his harangue was useless and he had to draft another promptly. Since he felt himself incapable of this, Cardinal du Bellay had to take on the job. The lawyer's part is harder than the preacher's, and yet we find, it seems to me, more passable lawyers than preachers, at least in France. It seems to be more peculiar to the mind to be prompt and sudden in its operation, and more peculiar to the judgment to be slow and deliberate. But a man who remains completely mute unless he has leisure to prepare, and also one to whom leisure gives no advantage for speaking better, are both abnormal cases. They tell of Severus Cassius that he spoke better without having thought about what he was going to say, that he owed more to fortune than to diligence, that it was an advantage to him to be interrupted in speaking, and that his adversaries were afraid to goad him for fear that anger would redouble his eloquence. I know by experience this sort of nature that cannot bear vehement, vehement, vehement and lab laborious premeditation. If it doesn't go along gaily and freely, it goes nowhere worth going. We say of certain works that they smell of oil and the lamp because of a certain harshness and roughness that labor imprints on productions in which it has a large part. But besides this, the anxiety to do well the tension of straining too intently on one's work, put the soul on the rack, break it, and make it impotent, as happens with water, which, because of the very pressure of its violence and abundance, cannot find a way out of an open bottleneck. It is no less peculiar to the kind of temperament I am speaking of, that it wants to be stimulated, not shaken and stung by such strong passions as Cassius's anger, for that emotion would be too violent. Not shocked, but roused and warmed up by external present and accidental stimuli. If it goes along all by itself, it does nothing but drag and languish. Agitation is its very life and grace. I have little control over myself and my moods. Chance has more power than here than I. The occasion, the company, the very sound of my voice draw more from my mind than I find in it when I sound it and use it by myself. Thus, its speech is better than its writings, if there can be choice where there is no value.